Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay here, back with another video tutorial for our channel Simple Snippets. Now this is a continuation of our playlist which is beginning C++ programming and in this entire playlist up until now we've discussed all the procedural oriented programming. So we've completed one entire paradigm and we are starting off with the second paradigm of C++ programming which is introduction to object oriented programming. Now up until now as I mentioned we've just discussed the procedural part. So this is going to be a new lecture and this is going to be a mostly a theoretical video tutorial for this particular video and in this part we are going to discuss discuss the object oriented programming paradigm and what this methodology is and why we use object oriented programming. So with that being said, let's get started. So in this video, we'll be basically mostly going through the theoretical aspect of object oriented programming as to what exactly object oriented programming is, how is this methodology different from the procedural part and what are certain key features of object oriented programming and how are the advantages in the real world scenario. So let's list down certain important aspects of procedural oriented programming as well as object oriented programming. And as you can see on the screen, I have list down certain points for each of those methodologies. So in procedural oriented programming, we generally have a list of instructions for a computer to follow. So we have a group of similar tasks and we have organized them in terms of functions. Now if you've seen this entire playlist you know what exactly functions are and if you don't know you can check out the videos which we have put in this playlist which cover the topic of functions. So group of similar tasks are organized in terms of functions and they all operate on certain global data. So whatever data that we declare in the void main that is whatever variables we create are accessible throughout the program. So that is why the term global data. So in this procedural part usually data is publicly available and the sense of security is low. So what does object oriented programming do in this case? So in object oriented programming, the emphasis is more given on data rather than the functions that operate on that data. So programs are divided into what are known as objects and not functions. So all the data structures are designed such that they characterize the object. Now I know objects and classes are something new which is going to come along and I'll be explaining to you by giving examples as well. But for this moment, just let's just theoretically see what exactly it means. So a Along with objects, whatever the functions that operate on the data are bundled inside those objects itself. So data is not directly available throughout the program and it is hidden and cannot be directly accessed. Now I know these little points are not going to mean a lot but let's go ahead and take few examples as well and in the end I'll also show you a basic program wherein we actually go ahead and declare a class and create some objects and I'll explain what those are in a while. Okay so that was theoretical aspect. Let's try to visualize the two different methodologies that is procedural oriented programming and object oriented programming in terms of a diagram and you'll get a little more clear idea about what object oriented programming is. So on the left hand side you can see we have certain global data let's say these are certain integer variables or certain variables that we've created inside our program and we've created a bunch of functions. Now inside those functions we have certain local variables which have the scope inside that function itself. But you can see that function 1 and function 2 both can access global data which is on the left and function 2 and 3 can again access the global data which is on the right which means that the this data is available throughout those functions. Now in real world scenarios wherein data is crucial, say for example you have a bank account management system wherein your data is very important, you do not want any unrestricted access to that data. So procedural oriented programming generally is not very suitable for real world scenarios and procedural oriented is more suited for mathematical or certain functions or certain scenarios where the data is not very crucial. But let's take a look at object oriented programming. As I mentioned the data and the functions that operate on the data are bundled together inside something that is known as objects and these objects are essentially variables of type class. Now if you remember in the first or the second video tutorial we've discussed data types in that we have custom data types or user defined data types which had a part which had classes. So what a class is is sort of like a template which we can use to create our own custom variables just like structures which we have seen in the previous video tutorial itself. So this was a little visual explanation and I know the idea is still not very clear. So let's move ahead and see what object oriented programming is and its key features. So let me just read out the bookish definition of object oriented programming. So object oriented programming is an approach that provides a way of modularizing programs by creating partition memory area for both data and functions that can be used as a template which essentially is a class for creating copies of such modules on demand which are objects. Now again this was a very technical definition and I'm sure this idea will get very clear to you when we actually go ahead and see the example in the end. But 
but let me just read out certain basic concepts associated with object oriented programming which we'll be going through throughout these upcoming video tutorials so the first feature is classes and objects and we'll see this example right in this video tutorial itself then comes data abstraction and encapsulation so data is bundled together inside the object which has those functions that operate directly on that data and the entire process is hidden from the outside world so that's why data abstraction and encapsulation then we have the concept of inheritance wherein we can take certain properties of a class and transfer it to other class then we have polymorphism dynamic binding and message passing i'm not going in very detail or very theoretical detail about all these points because we're going to encounter them throughout these tutorial series and we'll see certain programs which would clear your ideas more so as i mentioned let's take a real world example of how object oriented programming would help and let's say for example you have a car manufacturing company the company name is toyota as you can see and we have a certain model which is going to into production and we have to save certain data about that car and you can see the yellow points and those are the variables that we need to store as data so we need to store the company name we need to store the model name we need to store whether the fuel type is petrol or diesel again we have to store its mileage and price so these are the five data points about one particular car that we have to save in the program so in procedural part which you can see in the green you can see that i have created five different variables and then later on we have all the processes that we use to save that data so let's say for example this was just for one car of one type of one company and we have to save five different cars so you have to repeat these variables n number of times depending upon the number of car details that you want to save so that makes it very hectic and then again you have to create n number of functions which operate on individual cars right so say for example you want to display the mileage of a particular car of a particular company then you have to create that function then you have to create another function if you want to display the data of another model car so that becomes very hectic in procedural oriented programming now let's go ahead in object oriented paradigm and let's see so in this case we create a class which essentially is pretty much like a structure so the class will have all those variables and we you can see there is a function display details which will display the details all these details now this is outside the void main function now inside the main function we create an object of type cars so instead of creating five individual variables we create one variable object one and the data type of that variable is cars so cars is essentially now a data type which we have custom designed for our need so it is a user defined data type which has all these different variables inside so object one has all these five different variables similarly we created another object of the same data type or you can say of the same class in this case and again it would have all these five different variables so as you can see each of this object has its individual set of five different variables and a function associated with it so you can see it becomes much more easy to manage the entire code as well as the data is combined with the functions itself so that's where in real world scenarios where data is very important object oriented programming takes a lead and provides a lot of advantages and we'll see many more advantages in the upcoming videos so this was just a overview in terms of a visual representation so let's go ahead and actually see a program and i'll show you how to go ahead and create a class as well as create an object of that class okay so quickly go ahead and open up your dev c++ ide or any ide wherein you actually go ahead and code this program and i would want you to code along with me because that is the best way you get practice of programming so as you can see i have already typed in the basic structure of a c++ program over here and you can see i have the header file io stream and there is one more header file which is string which we are going to use because we are going to use an class from this header file and i'll tell you which what class that is in a while so let's first start off by creating a class and as i mentioned the class is supposed to be created outside the main function so this is our main function so we have to start creating the class over here so i'll say class and let's take the same example that we saw in the visual representation that is cars so i'll say class cars open and closing curly brackets and then a semicolon now inside this we have to create five different variables so the first is the company name so i'll say string company underscore name so now this string is a class which is coming from this header file so what this does is it replaces the conventional character array that we have to create so usually we have to create a char array so we say char company nm and then we have to give certain value explicitly during the compile time because then we have to create pointers if you want dynamically to allocate the memory depending upon the size of the name so that is a little bit of hassle and instead of using this char array we can directly use this string class which is coming from this header file so now this essentially works as a data type for us so it will directly store a complete stream of string that is a complete stream of characters so this is for company name 
then we have the car's model name so i'll write model name then we have the fuel type which can be petrol diesel electric or whatever then we have the mileage so i'll say float m i l e a g e mileage and lastly we have the price so i'll say double price now all these values inside the class are supposed to be kept private which means that any function which is outside this class over here say for example function my function or public void my function which is trying to access these data values should not be directly able to access them so that so there is a way to add that layer of security and we have to write in private and then a colon so this is a access specifier which determines whether these values can be directly accessed outside the class or can be accessed by any function outside the class or not so in this case we have to keep it private so that's how we add a layer of security in object oriented programming now lastly what we will do is we'll create a function which will set the data and we will create one more function which would display the data so i'll say public colon and these functions are supposed to be public because they would indirectly be used to show the data and they would access this private data since the functions are going to be inside the class they only they can access this data so they have to be kept public now i'll say void set data now you already know how to create a function you need a return type you need the function name then open and closing round brackets and then open and closing curly brackets and inside that you have to define what the function is going to do so in set data we are going to take in five different parameters so what we'll do is we'll say string c name which is company name then we'll say string m name which is model name then we have string f type which is fuel type then we have float m which is mileage and then we have double p which is price so this function is going to take in five different parameters and all these parameters are going to go to these individual variables inside our class now these variables inside our class are also known as member variables or they are also known as data members since they belong to this particular class and these functions inside our class are known as member functions so you might come across these terms in object oriented programming quite a lot of time in the further video tutorials so make a note of them these are known as member variables or data members and this is member functions so when we pass these values we have to assign them to these respective data members so i'll say company name is equal to c name and i'll say model underscore name is equal to m name then we have f u e l fuel type is equal to f type we have mileage is equal to m and price is equal to p so this was for setting the data similarly we have to display the data as well so we'll say void display data and here we are not supposed to pass any parameters we're just going to display the data so we'll write c out yeah we have c out car properties then we'll leave two lines then we have company name which is company underscore name then we have company model which is model underscore name fuel type is equal to fuel type mileage is mileage and so yeah our basic template of the entire class cars is ready so you can see everything marked in blue is our template so we have created our own user defined data type slash class so this is another way of calling user defined data type as class whose name is cars and inside that we have five data members which may or may not be same in in their basic data types so we have three strings one float one double and this string essentially is another class which is coming from this header file then in the public section we have two functions which operate on these private data members now only these functions can directly access these data members so this is all outside the main function now what happens inside the main function so here we create car1 so you can see this cars is exactly this class name so you have to write it as it is with the caps on because it is case sensitive and i have created car1 now this car1 is essentially an object of type cars so this car1 will have all these five data members as well as these two functions so in other words you can say objects are nothing but variables of type class so you can see there is a relation between our basic variables and the user defined variables so you can say int x 
Now you know integer is a basic data type or it is a predefined data type in C++ programming and x is the variable of this type. Similarly, cars is a new data type that we've created. So it is a user defi defined data type and it is known as a class and car1 is an object or you can say car1 is a variable whose type is cars or you can name this anything else say for example object1 if it's confusing or you can name it any anything. So I'm keeping it car1 but essentially it is having all these data members and member functions inside this one single object and from now on we'll be calling this as an object. So now you understand the relation between a basic variable and an object as well. Now what we'll do is we'll say car1 dot and if you're using dev c++ and if you said hit control space you'll get this intellisense and you can see there are two functions available that we can access with this object display data and set data. Since we haven't set any data we'll first go ahead and set data and then it is asking for string c name which is company name so i'll say toyota comma then it is asking the model i'll say altus comma fuel type i'll say petrol then in the float which is mileage i'll say 15.5 comma and the price i'll say 15 lakhs Okay, so this is the data that we've set. Now I'm hard coding this value. Now you can also take it from the user. You can say see out enter a data and you can take it from user and then set it. You can create five variables and then pass those variables over here. So that would be the same thing right now for simplicity purpose. I'm directly hard coding it over here and I'll say car one dot display data. So this let's try to actually save this and compile this program and let's see if this basic program works. I'll just hit control S and I'll save it intro to classes on objects one then i'll go ahead and compile it and let's see if it compiles properly okay it is giving me a typing error you can see the parameter that is m name and i have m a m a name i have made a typing error i can just copy and paste it over here save this again go to execute and let's try to compile i guess it would compile correctly and uh, there you go we have compilation results so there are zero errors and zero warnings which means that our code is correct let's try to run this and let's see if we can get these data from this object i'll go ahead and run this and there you go we have successfully got the data so you can see car name toyota altis petrol 15.5 and 15 lakh so essentially what we did is in the first line we actually set data so we call this function which took the values that we've passed over here and set it into our data members and then we call display data which actually just printed the data that we already had in these data members and this was done for this object similarly now if you have three more cars you can just simply go ahead and click comma and car 2 comma car 3 comma car 4 now individually you can go ahead and take data for these car 2, 3 and 4 as well and you don't have to actually create 5-5 five, five different set of data or variables for individual cars. So this is how this makes it very easy and this is how object oriented programming works in real world and there are many more advantages which we'll go ahead and see in the further video tutorials. So this was just an example of basic classes and objects and there is lot, mo lot more to learn so we'll go ahead and see that in further video tutorials. So yeah this was about the practical implementation of classes and objects and I hope you have a good idea of what a class is and what exactly object is and the relation between an object and a basic variable. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood a basic overview of what object oriented programming is and how it differs from the procedural part and what are the basic advantages and we also saw a practical implementation of a basic program wherein we created a class named cars and we also created an object. So in further video tutorials we'll go ahead and see more features and more implementation and more practical programs of object oriented programming so stay tuned and let me know if you have any queries or comments and you can always put them in the comment section. If you like this video video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel peace